Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to our farm, Cornucopia Orchards. I'm just doing a little bit of some random tasks today. Yesterday we went and picked up uh, 10 gallons of um, primer. It's apparently a new formula and uh, Lowe's um, partners, you know, through their paint program uh, with contractors uh, to to try these things out and see what they think. And so I've gotten these 10 gallons and I'm gonna be trying it out um, as soon as I have an area that's ready for primer. Yeah, look what I found. First yellow jacket of the season that I hit with my hat. Bad Hornet, this is my house. But hey, you know, with <laughs> wasps like this, there's a reason that I treat them that way. When I was a kid, I remember there was a, a summer where every time I stepped outside, there was a yellow jacket nest 40 feet up in the top of an oak tree. And they would dive bomb me, sting me, bite me, until finally I got some paintball guns and took care of that problem. Um, but ever since then, I've strongly disliked them. And just this last summer, you know, they had a nest not far in the ground, a huge one, not far from where my two boys like to play and they got stung. So. You know, I, I don't mind them if they're a long ways away from where I am, but I don't want them anywhere near my kids. There's a lot of stuff moving around right now. The walls need to be completely clear to board up and the floor needs to be cleared to work the ceiling first. So after we hoofed in 10,000 pounds of sheets, I've probably had to shuffle at least that much to and fro over the last week, not counting actually lifting sheets to install them. Definitely, it's the best workout I've had since framing was in full swing. It's given me quite a bit of time to reflect. I still don't know how a young introvert with mild social anxiety ended up in retail management as a first career. I do know that it changed me. I'm not an introvert anymore. I don't need alone time to recharge, and I do crave time spent with select people. My wife, my family, my friends, and... Yeah, sometimes I even miss the never-ending revolving door of strangers I encountered in my retail career. Building this house, especially the stage we've been at since mostly finishing the outside of the house, it's been solo work for the most part. Lots of time for me to introspect. It's given me time to start to undo some of the negative traits and habits about myself that I took on to survive the constant deluge of decisions and people needing something. From being the go-to manager at work, the one the team turned to for help, and the one who took care of the problems instead of pushing it all back downhill. To deal with it, I got really good at making lots of decisions quickly with okay quality results. I learned how to cut off everything extra. You know, the parts that make work satisfying and complete, but don't lead to hard numbers on spreadsheets. Yeah, that stuff. Let go of the small rough edges left to save a few hours of labor. Well, there's that silly robin. Didn't manage to kill itself on my window yesterday, but it spent most all the day hammering away at it for reasons unknown to me. I mean, if it just wants to be my friend, there are easier ways than trying to break into my house. As I've realized now, I hate making decisions hastily. I like taking time to consider, and not just shooting from the hip, even if I mostly hit the targets when I did, and I never really could let go of the rough edges, and finish things just enough to say they were ready to move on from to the next problem. I did like being the reliable one, the one both the leaders over me and the team who worked under me could turn to, but I never found that place in corporate retail that valued that. Still, I look back in pride on the work I did. I did more with less than anyone else in my area, driving better results in every position I took than those who went before or after. I'm not always easy to get along with. <laughs> Casey calls me a bulldozer. Having worked my way up from a seasonal hire while most of my peers had started in management direct from college, I was never able to drink the Kool-Aid, as the district manager who wanted me gone liked to say. I look back now, and I don't like who they pushed me to be towards the end of my time at my first 10-year-long retail job. It was better in many ways in the second job, but ultimately I saw the same gatekeeping happening there that had slowed me down in the previous company, and I decided I didn't want to waste another five or 10 years trying to show them how I fixed the operational problems, how I drove employee retention, and how it led to stronger sales time and again, when at the end of the day, though they said they cared about the merits and the results, 
It was a relationship game, and I sucked at that. I walk through the stores now, where I worked before, and yes, I smile to myself because even on their best days, they don't look as good as they did when I was there on the average days. But I also am far enough away from all of that that I can even forgive and empathize with my boss, who tried to save her own career by torpedoing mine. Don't get me wrong. I still haven't gotten past my feelings for the district manager who, when there weren't any grounds to fire me for performance, made my life miserable enough to get me to quit. I will grant this much. I gleaned an intimate understanding of business, of efficiency, of partnerships, and people's motivations at the ground level that I have been able to leverage to push us through the biggest project and challenge of my life. I'm grateful in a way for how things turned out because as hard as this road has been, I've had the chance to do something meaningful, something I'm truly proud of, not just stocking toilet paper on a shelf. Isn't it strange how time can turn resentment, can morph it into something better? Fairly easy process. I'm hoping this comes out well as far as the height goes, but basically I gave myself an eighth of an inch to where I can get that top piece in. I have to trim back some of the little fuzzies to get them out of the way. And hopefully I can just stack on the next one all the way across and then still be able to fit in that top sheet. I don't wanna be working the top sheets right now because my kids are downstairs and I can kind of listen for them and hopefully hear them if there's a problem. Uh, but this is kind of the easy thing for me to work on, I think, versus working downstairs in the hallway right now where it's just a little too dangerous for me to do what I would like to do. Plus, it'll be very exciting to start getting some of the work done on the second floor. I just like to bounce around. That's, that's kind of the end of the story there. I, uh, I always have liked to work on lots of different little things. And, uh, you know, obviously from that you can deduce that my stick to with tasks that I'm not being paid for per se has been a opportunity for me to improve on. Um, I like to start projects as many DIY guys like to do and then not finish them. But, um, I mean, the house is hopefully, um, fingers crossed going to be, you know, the biggest thing of my entire life and will be a thing that I finish. It, it will be, it will absolutely be a thing that I finish. Now, is the house ever really done hundred percent? If you're not building it for somebody else, I don't know. I mean, there'll probably be projects, you know, every couple of years on the house itself versus just the yard that I want to do here for the rest of my life, as long as we're here. Um, but, you know, for a basic level, it should be done this year. Well, we've got some stuff laid out here for uh, paint samples because there's a really good deal on some Sherwin paint through Lowe's right now, and we don't want to miss out on the opportunity for that. A little bit early, but uh, paint will keep a few weeks anyway, just fine. So we're setting up samples so that we can move them around and see them in the different colors and lighting conditions in the house here. And then you can do it on your own. So this is Blue Kiss, so I've shaken it up. What you're gonna do is you're gonna very gently put your brush in there, and then you're gonna brush it on here, okay? And don't, don't cover my letters. Okay, so let me show you. Can I have it for just a moment? I'm just gonna go like this, okay? And you're gonna cover the whole board. You don't need to dip so deep either, just to get the tip of your paintbrush. If you get the paint all the way up to the metal, then it's hard to clean off. You're doing very well, buddy. There you go. Let me try. Hide the high tide. I'm going to do high tide. And you're going to try your very best not to get it on your clothes, right? Right. Okay, you may want to either stand up or turn the board around, but yeah, just like that. I can see it. Um, that's just the box. So this is cabinet color, and we're looking at what white to get. Oh, does the box have anything in it? Not it anymore. <laughs> and I, I think we're kind of leaning towards this ivory keys up here. I think this thing to focus in here. 
It's hard to get both the cabinet color and the white color other than this angle. What do you think? Um, I, I like the Ivory Keys. Yeah, I'm leaning that way too. Yeah, mommy, mommy. Very different lighting up here. We've got quite a bit of natural light coming in this bedroom here. And we're kind of leaning towards either this High Tide or Ivory Keys. High Tide actually does have a warm undertone in this light. But down in the dining room, it was, or in the living room, it was very cool. Warm light. It looks more gray, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have the lights set to either 2700 or 3000. And I forget which one it is. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't know. I like the ultra wide actually better in this light. I I wondered about that because of the the color quality that you like with the overhead lights in uh artificial light whether we would have more of a preference. So I just told Casey that if she prefers uh, Ivory Keys, which is the tall one behind me here, <laughs> that I'd be okay with it. And I, although I slightly prefer High Tide, and she said, <laughs> well, if you prefer the High Tide, I'd be okay with the Ivory Keys. <laughs> I'm gonna have Casey explain the color of these two because you can't see it that well coming through a digital oh, screen. Yeah. And the funny thing that we have is We've always done this thing where I will describe something as cool or warm and she'll be like, no, it's not that. That's not what it is at all. And I, I honestly, I trust her description better. Like my description just comes from the way that the colors make me feel versus a scientific, like commonly accepted. <laughs> I would say that the white saturation is higher in the um, ivory keys and there's, there's more um, yellow tint to it, hence the ivory. Mm -hmm. The high tide is a gray base. Yeah, it's it's definitely more gray in this light. If we just take it over by a window. Yeah. The flat. You can you can really see that that one is gray and this one is Ivory. But that could also have something to do with the fact that they're on a gray and we didn't put a second coat on. Let me do something real quick. So door, which will be a common color, probably on the other doors and in some of the wood in the house. And the flooring that we've got. Um, I don't know, what do you think, dear? I still like the ivory keys. Ivory keys it is. Well, that's a wrap for today. Got at least started. Still a long way left to go, but uh, it feels good to be started on the drywall. Beautiful day to come visit here at the parents' farm. And there's a little bully and the big bully. Big bully is, I gather, slated for tasty meat this year. And little bully is still less than a year old and he's got a lot of life ahead of him. We're planning on starting ourselves a herd probably shared with the parents of some Dexters. And he's a good little guy. I guess he's been keeping the big bully company and doing a good job of it. What do you think, guys? <laughs> Not a whole lot bigger than Doggo. So this big guy here is a Piedmontese bull and he's reasonably friendly if a little bit, um, no, no, doggo, don't you do it, back up. If a little bit annoyed by the dog, wherever the dog went to, there he is, goofball. His name is George, and he'll come up and smell your hand, um, but he's a little bit too playful, and an animal that sleek and that size. You want to sniff? You want to sniff? Yeah, 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 doggo. And then there's this fellow over here. And he's, he's still a little shy. It's pretty hard to get him to come up and say hello with the dog there too.
we've had fairly big cows my whole life and so I'm not super bothered by him um, one of his relatives not his mom I guess maybe his aunt or cousin not sure which actually <laughs> she was even bigger than he is as far as her height much taller although he is definitely thicker than she ever was and that's just the difference between a bull and a cow and she had crazy eyes too so George is okay you are a good boy that feels good doesn't it yes get rid of those flies yes yes you are a good boy you are a good boy oh <laughs> I'm not for eating buddy I'm not for eating George hi dusk hi little guy It's really different to have an animal of that size. And he's not done growing by any means. He'll be a lot bigger than that. He's, I mean, he's not even a year old yet. Still, I think a couple months away, two months, three months away. But he will never be a monster like this thing. Do I gotta keep working on you? Do you want some more, George? Yeah. Yeah, big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that feels good, doesn't it? Dusk, buddy. Do you want to come say hi, Dusk? Hey, little one. He's, he's warming up to me, I think. Hi, buddy. Do you want to sniff? Do you like a sniff? Just a little one? What do you think, buddy? Yeah, that's safe. Yeah. 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 I'm not edible. But it's nice that you're friendly. So our farm is only about five acres when you include the house. So that's really not enough for us to be able to run that many cattle. However, currently what we're kind of thinking maybe we might do is we might run the cattle through twice a year on our place um, and then move them out to my parents for the middle of the year there's a lot more green here and that you know really would allow us to help keep their place grazed down while also not leaving them and, and having to deal with the animals in the winter obviously that plan only works if we get ourselves a, a barn built. so thanks for watching I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.